Tonight at 8 on News 10 NBC, we're taking Rochester's fast ferry to prime time. News 10 NBC brings you exclusive looks inside and everything you need to know before you step aboard. From its launch in Australia to its arrival in Rochester, we're there every step of the way. The countdown to Rochester's fast ferry. Tonight at 8 on News 10 NBC. Digging for answers, reporting them first. When you're looking to buy a new car, you want a big selection to choose from. And at John Holtz Honda, we've got over 900 new Hondas in stock and on the way. March on in for sign and drive specials, including the Civic VP for $169 a month. Or visit John Holtz Honda and discover the CRV EX 4x4 for $269 a month. Low payments and great Honda quality. Come in today and find out why we're number one only at John Holtz Honda, West Henrietta Road. Critics and audiences are raving about Grease. Can you change the show? The show is fantastic! If I was a pink lady, I definitely would be Rizzo. I had a crush on Danny because of his cute little dimple. Grease is the worst. Grease starring Frankie Avalon. Grease, it's still the word. I gotta see Frankie Avalon in Grease. Fine performances only. Tickets at Ticketmaster or call 232-1900. You're hot. Pontiac Vibe, the hottest selling car in its class. Only at your Pontiac dealer. Tonight's NBC lineup is driven by Bob Johnson Chevrolet. Our regularly scheduled program will not be seen at this time so that we may present the following 10 NBC special. The anticipation is growing. The countdown is on. Rochester's fast ferry will be here in a matter of weeks. But now, News 10 NBC takes you to where it all started. Australia. Behind the scenes before anyone else. Tonight, join News 10 NBC and your host, Gabe Dalmuth, for an exclusive ride on board Rochester's fast ferry. Good evening. After years of anticipation, the fast ferry will be pulling into the port of Rochester in a matter of weeks. But we weren't willing to wait, so News 10 NBC traveled to Australia, giving you a first-hand look before anyone else. We'll take you down under in just a few minutes, but first, we want to update you on its trip here. The boat left the shipbuilders in Fremantle, Australia in mid-February. It made its way through the South Pacific, where it had to steer clear of Cyclone Ivy. Its next stop was a six-day layover in Honolulu, Hawaii and then through the Panama Canal and into the Atlantic. The boat is making its way up the East Coast and will dock in Washington, D.C. next week. From there, it will sail to the St. Lawrence Seaway, to Lake Ontario, and arrive at the Port of Rochester in mid-April. News on NBC's Berkeley Breen had the enviable assignment to travel halfway around the world for an exclusive tour of the ship before it left Australia. Now, Berkeley, you had uh, quite an experience down under. Tell us what it was like to finally stand next to that ship after all those months of anticipation. Well, uh, over those months, Gabe, I think it proves that the adage, uh, talk is cheap. We've mentioned time and time again how big this boat is, five stories high, the size of a football field. But I think people are going to be shocked when they finally see the ferry in person. Now, having said all that, here is another attempt to give you some perspective. This is video of me standing next to the ferry as it sat in port in Australia. As you can see, there's the proof this boat is very, very big. So the size of the ferry certainly leaves an impression. Right? Well, that, that's it, Gabe. Uh, the first impression is of the sheer size of the mm -hmm. ferry. But the impression you're left with is with the attention to the smallest detail inside. And that's what we found on our exclusive tour in Australia. It has been clocked at 48 knots. That's highway speed. It is supposed to be the 21st century way to travel. But this is a project that hit its share of speed bumps. It is a boat we had to see for ourselves. These boats just get you, and I, I always feel the same when I come on board. Just great. <laughs> 
Our tour guide is Bob Mansfield. He is the technical manager for CATS, essentially the eyes of the company down under. We are walking exactly where you will drive. They roll on the front, on the back, and they roll off the front, so yeah. the cars actually drive straight through, and then when we come loading in Toronto, they'll load in the bow and they'll drive off in Rochester on the stern. The garage is movable. The second floor rises to the ceiling, making enough room for transport trucks. The company is banking on that kind of cargo, especially in the winter. But you won't spend much time down here, so neither did we. When you walk up the stairs, you enter a very different world. The ferry is part cafe, part airline. The main bar is in the back. The observation lounge with the very best view is in the front. Now, if you walk on the ferry, you're going to come through those doors right there. Take a couple of steps, and you're right into the atrium of the fast ferry. And once you get here, you've got the stairs up to the second floor, and then just to my left, the duty-free shop. Upstairs, there is a special business class section equipped with Internet workstations. In the back, you can walk outside. The stern deck is large and all weather. The floor is covered with non-slip paint. Who's the lucky chap who gets to shovel this? Oh, one of the crew, I'd imagine. <laughs> Won't be me. <laughs> one of the things that strikes you about this ferry is just the attention to detail. This is the movie lounge right here. And every seat is slightly higher than the seat in front of it. So that means if you're sitting here in the back, you still have a pretty good view of the front. The detail goes from top to bottom. There are monitors for satellite TV. There are small vents above all the windows to keep the view clear. And the carpet is speckled with red and gold, a gesture to Xerox and Kodak. These particular features are something that I've experienced over the 15 years of being involved in these boats. And many things have thought, well, what? this is silly. Why don't we have that? In the end, you are standing in a ferry the size of a football field, five stories high. It is a boat that leaves a very big wake and a very big impression. Or people who are maybe who are skeptical of it, do you think this will win them over, you think? Just the, the presence of this thing? I think the people are, as you say, the naysayers. Once they actually just come on board the vessel and see around it, they'll realize that some of the arguments they've had against it were possibly... Uh, groundless. Well, Berkeley, a lot of people have been saying that it's not just a destination that's intriguing going right. to Toronto, but uh, some people are willing to take the ferry just for the ride, the experience. Do you think they'll go for it as a joy ride, if nothing else? Boy, I tell you what, Gabe, everybody we talk to say they're going to take this ferry at least once. Now, mm -hmm. the trick for cats, the ferry operators, right. is to get them on a second time and a third time. So that remains to be seen. But we actually got on the ferry ourselves when we were in Australia, right. an exclusive ride. We're going to take you on that ferry. But, Gabe, we should tell you that it wasn't all smooth sailing. All right, and the man who will captain the ferry to and from Rochester is as eager as we are to see the ship in person. Captain John Williams was hired mid-February as one of the three ferry skippers. Williams has 11 years on the water. He skippered high-speed ferries in Japan. He says his crew will spend the month of April training on the ferry, and he's excited about his new job. He has a brand new ship, too, right out of the box. <laughs> That's going to be fun to be on board a brand new ship. The captain and the crew on board the ferry will have the latest cutting edge technology. Coming up, we'll take a closer look at safety and security on the ferry, how it was built for Rochester winters, and for keeping passengers safe from terrorism. This is March Madness on wheels at your Pontiac Beach. The time of year when you step it up and leave the weak stuff at home. With Smart Buy Financing, qualified buyers get a Pontiac Vibe for around $206 a month with no down payment. Tax, title, license, and dealer fees extra. Residency restrictions apply. Call for details. March Madness on wheels at your Pontiac dealer.
the time to buy. Now's the time to save on premium down blend American Signature Living Room packages from Value City Furniture. Six million dollars. Three hundred truckloads of living rooms are in stock for immediate delivery. Designer living rooms. Shown dried hardwood frames. Steel on steel spring construction. Limited lifetime warranties. And all for about half of what you'd expect to pay. Plus, buy now with no money down and no interest for 12 months. Don't miss the six million dollar down sale going on now at Value City Furniture. You just can't do any better. The roads were really nasty. Where's your truck? Want to handle anything? Then get into Jeep Adventure Days, where well-qualified owners or lessees can get a Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo for just $2.99 a month and our 770 powertrain limited warranty on every trail-rated Jeep 4x4. See your local Jeep dealer today. The trip from Rochester to Toronto on board the fast ferry will take approximately 2 hours and 15 minutes. Approximate time for loading and disembarking is 17 minutes. Arrive 45 minutes before your departure time. Welcome back. I'm Gabe Dalmuth. Thank you for joining us for this special broadcast on the Fast Ferry. I'm joined by Berkeley Breen, who traveled to Australia to get a first-hand look at the ship before it set sail. Now, Berkeley, uh, when you were in Australia, you checked into safety and security. There's an interesting uh, ship here, Gabe. It was built with Rochester winters and September 11th in mind. Inside, the ferry is full of cutting-edge technologies, and the waters around it are full of surprises. Here's what we found. It is amazing what you see on the shores of Australia. Dolphins follow fishing boats to feed on the day's catch. The wildlife down here in Australia, you can literally come out to a dock and feed a dolphin. Amazing. But Gary and Sharon Farmer are amazed by another sight. Rochester's fast ferry floating in the background. It's nice to know that Australian shipbuilders can sort of compete with the world and build a ship of that quality. The farmers say it's the biggest ferry they've ever seen, but that didn't happen overnight. This is where design becomes a reality. Those images of the ferries on computers are downloaded onto that laser cutter right there, and this is where all the aluminum is cut to build the boat. It took the equivalent of 32 million aluminum pop cans to build Rochester's ferry, but inside that aluminum shell is what makes it unique. The bridge is a state-of-the-art control center. A joystick steers the ship. A satellite system controls its direction on the water. The bridge is pretty uh, space-age technology. And, uh, but we also try and keep it as simple as possible. <laughs> there we go, that's better. This is the infrared camera system. It can detect anything on the water remotely different in temperature, and that includes ice and other boats. And the bridge can also control temperature in every part of the ferry. Watch how a computer cools a room from 24 degrees Celsius down to 19. Here's an example of the high-tech security on the fast ferry. I'm walking through the upstairs lounge of the ferry, but no matter where I go, I can be monitored by a security camera. Any activity that causes any kind of suspicion can be monitored in the bridge and on land. In fact, every movement by the boat is monitored in Rochester and Australia. The ferry was designed with Homeland Security in mind. So Washington must have been happy to hear that stuff. Yeah, I think so. I mean, information is also the major thing. If people know what's happening, that's half the problem. John Rothwell is the executive chairman of Austal. You can't make anything terrorist-proof, but at least we've gone some way towards that, and it was very much in our mind when we put the vessel together. But everything still was not perfect. On inspection just a few weeks ago, the U.S. Coast Guard made the ferry replace the air ducts in and around the galley. The Coast Guard said it was one more protection against fire. The ferry also needed to use U.S. certified life jackets, larger than the ones they expected. In the end, the changes were minimal, and the ferry passed the inspection. It's going to be in, in New York 30, uh, by the 31st of March, so for the people in Rochester, it's coming. 
And the ferry is going to get another inspection when it finally arrives here in Rochester. Berkeley, I guess uh, one of the key issues has to be passenger safety, right? Uh, that's true. And remember how we talked about just moments ago that we were the first local media right. on the uh, ferry. Well, we took it out under the Indian Ocean. Before we got out into the water, we were briefed on how to use life jackets on board. Now, like on an airplane, passengers will get this through onboard TV monitors. The ferry also has four marine evacuation rafts. They're the round barrels on the sides of the ferries. Each carries about 100 people, and there's five other lifeboats that fit 100 people. The ferry needs to handle 110% of its capacities. Kat says uh, the crew is going to train on all those scenarios when the ferry finally arrives. And uh, one thing people have asked us, Berkeley, is uh, handicap accessibility. How easy will it be to get around the ship, and how easy it will be to board? Well, the ship is handicap accessible. Austell, the company that built the ferry, says it complies with all the provisions of the ADA. There is an elevator are on board. There is wheelchair access throughout the passenger areas as well, and that includes ramps, doorways, and disabled uh, toilets. Now, if there is a medical emergency on board the fast ferry, the crew is prepared. Katz tells us everyone on board has first aid training. Now, they're not allowed to perform any major medical procedures, mm -hmm. but Katz says at any point on this trip, they are going to be less than an hour from port. All right, that's good to know. Yeah. And we're heading back to Australia. Just ahead, we'll show you why the ferry is not the only attraction in Western Australia. As Berkeley Green discovered, the traditions halfway around the world are indeed world apart. Your support of the United Way Red Cross campaign is needed more than ever before. Whatever your comfort level, your contribution supports key programs in our community. All of us in the John Holtz organization encourage you to watch this year's campaign video in your workplace. By saying yes to the United Way Red Cross campaign, you become a champion of our community. Thank you for making a difference. It's the way we take care of our own. Local resident and Olympic champion, Kathy Turner. I've been competing in sports for many years, skating, skiing, cycling, but the strain from wearing contacts for so long has really taken a toll. But all that's different now thanks to Dr. Andrew Taylor and LASIK MD. Imagine the freedom to do the things that you love to do without the hassle of wearing contacts or glasses. Thank you so much, LASIK MD. You've really changed my life. Call 1 888 Dr. Taylor. It's big, it's different. It's the grand opening of the newest Mattress Advantage on Monroe Avenue in Brighton. At Mattress Advantage, we are the manufacturer. You get exactly what you want for the sleep that you need. Now through Sunday, receive a comfort level adjustment with the purchase of any premium mattress set. Mattress Advantage grand opening specials are yours in Greece, Henrietta, Canandaigua, and our newest location, 2240 Monroe Avenue next to Max Pies. Mattress Advantage, we'll make your bed. Meet the good man from Spur, Chevy, Buick, Pontiac, GMC. The four most wanted brands, 500 vehicles, all on one enormous Brockport lot. So head west today, because the Spur brothers have got new 04 Power Everything Grand Ams at the giddy up and go price of just $165 a month. Without a red cent down payment for a few dollars more, Spur's got loaded up 04 rendezvous, only $269 a month. No down payment needed, lower prices, no slick dealing from these good men. Spur, drive the extra five and give them a shot. The water jets on the fast ferry could fill an Olympic-sized swimming pool in 35 seconds. I'm Gabe Dalmuth. We're giving you an expanded, exclusive look at the fast ferry. We'll take you on board for a ride in just a few minutes. But first, we want to tell you about the area where the boat was built. Fremantle, Australia is a shipping town located in Western Australia. We sent Berkeley Breen there to check out the boat before it sailed. So Berkeley, what is it like on the other side of the world? It's a long way away, <laughs> right. is what it's like. Uh, Western Australia, which is the name of the state, is a lot like Arizona, only it's right next to the ocean. Uh, the capital, Perth, is known as the most isolated capital in the world, and Fremantle, where we were, is just south of Perth. Everyone there is fairly laid back, but if they take one thing very seriously, it's their football. The NFL is a very good uh, comparison. Um, because of the media exposure, but also because we're very proud that this is our own country sport and the NFL is America's own country sport. That is Chris Connolly, coach of the Fremantle Dockers. They are the sport heroes in the same town building the fast ferry. The team is in preseason right now and that runs five months long. Aussie football is a grueling game. Its field could fit three football fields. 
and it's the only game played in every part of the country. We feel that Australia is the best sporting country in the world per capita. Australian rules football is the biggest sport in this country. And the Fremantle Football Club, if we can win the Premiership, we think we're the best club in the best sport and the best sporting country. We're the best club in the world. So we try and keep it pretty simple. You know, NFL players complain about five weeks of training camp. These guys train for almost five months. Oh, it's, it's rough. No it's protection, no anything. They, they look like a bunch of toy wires out there. <laughs> That's right. Their season starts this Saturday against the Carlton Blues. And remember, Gabe, we said that Fremantle is, or you said Fremantle is an old shipping town, mm -hmm. but it's kind of going through a renaissance right now. Uh, and it dates back to 1983, and it comes at the expense of the United States. The sailing boat Australia II beat Dennis Connor in the America's Cup. Four years later, Fremantle hosted the America's Cup, and the town is still experiencing a tourist boom. The sailing boat is the main attraction at Fremantle's Maritime Museum. The crew, all the crew members, are still national heroes. Well, that's quite a change, as you know, from the country's origins, yeah. which uh, began as a penal colony for England. It was the last place on earth anyone wanted to go. You, if you stole a piece of bread, if you disagreed with the Queen, this is where you would end up. The Fremantle Prison was built in 1850. For the next 16 years, it was a colonial lockup. Now, the rules said prisoners could not even touch the walls. So one inmate covered these elaborate drawings with his porridge. They weren't discovered until the mid-1960s. The cells are incredibly small, but back then, the prisoners fit right in. These people weren't very tall. You mustn't think there weren't, there were only a few people that were very tall, but these guys were only about uh, four foot ten with the maximum of heights. And so some of these guys, so they, they really wasn't that small. To us today is a small cell. Yeah. But well, they weren't that small in those days. Gabe, it was a working prison all the way till 1991. Never had any plumbing inside. Mm -hmm. And temperatures inside those cells would reach 125 degrees. In fact, the heat was so bad, it started a riot back in 1988. All right, Berkeley, thank you. Now you've seen where the ferry was built. We've taken you inside the boat. Coming up, we get to take the fast ferry out for a spin. Berkeley Breen was the first Rochester reporter to ride the ferry. And tonight, he will share the thrilling experience. Multifunctional, adaptable, retractable. It's the sport utility with more utility. The new GMC Envoy XUV. Qualified buyers, smart buy a new Envoy XUV 4x4 SLE for around $318 a month with zero down payment. Tax title license, dealer fees extra. Residency restrictions apply. Call for details. a makeover and save on Glidden Color Paint at Chase Pitkin. Here's a big $5 mail-in rebate. Color flat, just $8.99. Satin, $10.99. Semi-gloss, $11.99. The rebate makes this an incredible deal. Armstrong Domain laminate flooring easily installs. Choose natural oak or butterscotch finish. Just $0.99 cents a square foot with your Shoppers Club card. Improve your home and save at Chase Pitkin. During Clover's Best Buy Sale, you'll get huge savings, make no payments, and pay no interest on finances for 12 full months. Choose from over 20 sets of outdoor casual furniture, priced as low as $3.99, but no more than $9.99. Get a five-piece Tropitone set for just $7.99, but only while supplies last. A complete pool package is only $6.88, including pool, liner, filter, and ladder. Plus, you'll get installation on any size pool for only $99. Our best-selling bar is only $3.88, and bar stools start at just $19. During the Best Buy Sale, only at Clover. The drinking age on board the fast ferry is 21. The ferry's maiden voyage will be in early May. The ports of Toronto and Rochester are getting ready for its arrival. In Toronto, the terminal will be on Cherry Street. That's about one and a quarter miles from downtown Toronto. Right now, crews are working on a temporary terminal building. Once Canadian Customs gives the green light, the Port Authority will build a permanent structure. The terminal will be able to process 200 cars within 20 minutes. So getting through customs should be a quick process. 
If you don't take a car, you can take a taxi or grab a bus into downtown Toronto. But the bus service is just for weekends beginning May 9th and running until Labor Day. And back here at home, the Port of Rochester is just about complete. All the structural work is finished. The terminal will consist of two floors. There will be a restaurant on the second floor. And Berkeley, you were the first Rochester reporter to ride the ferry. Uh, I remember the night you called in. You were pretty excited about the whole experience. What was it like? Well, Gabe, uh, we arrived very early that morning, a Thursday morning, about 5 a.m. It was supposed to be the final test run for the ferry before it left Australia for good. It was supposed to reach 46 knots out in the Indian Ocean. But watch what happened. It stands five stories high, and it makes a big first impression. I can tell you what's going to happen. They're going to come up to the up to the wharf and they're going to say, holy gee, you get a look at this thing. Because John Rothwell is the head of Austell Ships. It's his company that built the ferry. And for the first time, we take you on board and out under the water. The ferry leaves harbor for the Indian Ocean. The speed is cautious past the breakwater. 10.9. Place to city around 11 knots. Two miles out, yes, the ferry starts to pick up okay. the pace. Port of Fremantle, Spirit of Ontario 1, Channel 12. The call is made to go full speed. Go uh, full speed. But then, something happens. The ferry climbs to 22 knots and peaks at just 28. That's 16 knots below its average speed. So I'm standing here on the stern deck. It's a pretty comfortable breeze on an awfully hot day in Australia, but if we walk just a few feet this way into a slightly more open area of the deck, you can see how the wind picks up considerably. Difficult to stand almost. We're going at about 28 knots right now. That's about half the speed that the ferry can manage. And you can see how hard the wind is, and you can see the size of the wake that it leaves. Inside, the concern is still about so speed. What, uh, what is it climbing now? Uh, For more than an hour, the crew tries to get the ferry up to 44 knots, but can't. So what do you think happened today? Uh, the problem today is that the, the ship's been sitting around for about three to four weeks, and uh, in Coburn Sound, it's particularly salty, and we get a very big problem with marine growth. This is the problem. It's called a white coral worm, and it grew to three quarters of an inch on part of the hulls. That's enough resistance to change the dynamics of the ferry. I mean, we, if we hadn't done 48 knots, I'd be concerned, but the ship does 48 knots, so I'm not, not really concerned. Yeah. We'll, we'll rectify that today. Divers cleaned the hulls. The ferry reached 44 knots on its next trial. Osto says this problem only happens when the ferry sits in warm salt water. At 28 knots, the ferry rocks slightly up and down. You can tell from the land on the horizon. But at full speed, the boat is very different. The ship changes its trim a little bit. And uh, That's smoother. It's, it's so much smoother to ride because uh, you don't get the effect of the, the swell or anything anywhere. It's just a very smooth ride. The ferry returned to shore. The work to clean the hull started right away. Soon, the ferry will dock like this every day in Rochester. I'd be extremely surprised if that didn't catch on very quickly and, uh, and that it, 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 in fact, wouldn't lead to a second vessel. And if they need a second boat, I'm sure you'll be happy to build it. And we're looking forward to that next order, yes. Now, Berkeley, when you initially called about a problem aboard the ferry on that first ride, uh, it was sort of an air of mystery for a while. Right. I didn't know what was going on. It turned out uh, it was a sort of a fluke, a trick of Mother Nature. Well, that's true, and Katz tells us that there is a special coating on these twin hulls of the mm -hmm. fast ferry that protect it from growth in cold, fresh water. Mm -hmm. Well, the problem was it had been sitting in warm salt water for weeks, so Katz tells us it's not going to see this kind of problem in Lake Ontario. All right, it's good to hear. Yeah. The ferry's maiden voyage is in early May. Here's up-to-date information now on fares and schedules. It all begins May 2nd. From the 2nd through the 27th, there will be two return trips, round trips per day. And then from May 28th through the summer season, the fast ferry will make three return trips each day. For those three trips, here are the departure times. 7.30 a.m. from Rochester, 10.30 from Toronto. Then at 1.30 p.m. from Rochester, 4.30 from Toronto. The final departure from Rochester is at 7.30, an evening on the lake. Final departure from Toronto is 11.30. Now the price of a ticket. 
These are U.S. dollars for a one-way trip, not round trip, one way. Adults, 18 to 59, $20. Youngsters from age 5 to 17, $10. And children under 5 are free. Tickets for seniors, age 60 and over, $18. If you want to take your car, it'll cost $40. That's for cars and SUVs. Motorcycles will cost $25 to bring on board. And bicycles, $10. Thank you for joining us tonight, and Berkeley, thanks for bringing us all that great video from Australia. My pleasure. It was a great trip. Please stay tuned to Newstown NBC as we continue to bring you exclusive coverage of the ferry's journey to Rochester and its much-anticipated arrival. Good night. Good night.